Hey guys, welcome. Uh, today we have the uh, a distinguished guest in the house, Mr. DJ <laughs> Ashba. Um, multi-platinum recording artist, producer, designer, entrepreneur, Grammy nominated. Uh, I don't know what else you can throw into that mix, but uh, <laughs> thanks for being here. Thank you, brother. Happy to have you. Thank man. you. Thanks. So uh, I want to dive in a little bit and talk about um, how uh, you got to where you're at. So you grew up in the Midwest. I did. Yeah. I was born in Indiana mm -hmm. and I moved to <laughs> a little town called Fairbury, Illinois when I was really young. And uh, yeah. And it kind of started there, you know, yeah. out of boredom. I lived in a little small country town, very church town. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom's religion is super religious. Mm -hmm. It's basically Amish with lights, with electricity. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so we weren't allowed to have, like, TVs growing up and stuff. So while all the other kids were, you know, watching cartoons and stuff, I, you know, I was on the piano playing playing music because that's all I had to yeah. keep my mind creative and drawing on anything I could draw on, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. And you bounce back and forth between Indiana and mm. Illinois? Yeah, my dad's <laughs> side of the family lives in Indiana and my mom's side lives in Illinois. Cool, so, cool. Yeah. And then uh, fast forward a little bit, uh, you got good at piano, uh, <laughs> you, you got bit by the rock and roll bug. I did, and at yeah. At 19, you packed up and moved to Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, I, I bought my first guitar out of the Sears catalog. I detasseled <laughs> corn all summer long. And, and that's a brutal job. I know it people is. have done that. My and brother actually did that. Yeah. yeah, and when I was nine years old, I bought my first guitar. And um, and as soon as I picked it up, it was an instrument my mom didn't, you know, force me to practice. And, you know, it kind of, you know, probably annoyed her more than anything. So I got uh, I got a kick out of that, I think. Yeah. And I and fell in love. What was it about the guitar that uh, made you just gravitate uh, towards it, though? The first time I heard Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen sure. play, it just did something to my soul. Yeah. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so That's awesome. Yeah. And then so uh, you get to L.A. and yeah. big difference from Illinois. What was big time? I mean, well, was the it total culture shock? Yeah, it was. And <clears throat> the thing, you know, when you think of L.A. as a small, you know, small town kid in the country, um, you just, you know, you want to be the best you can be so I literally I was obsessed with practicing you know I'd practice from morning till night yeah. and uh, when I got there um, I realized there are a lot of great players but there you know there were a lot of not so great players <laughs> as yeah. well so you know I'm glad I put in the the work you know the hard work beforehand and and when I got there <laughs> I uh, was lucky enough to room up with the band from Chicago mm -hmm. called Barracuda and at that time they were a cover band, but at one time they, they had a song on MTV and stuff. Nice. And um, I knew the drummer, uh, Vince, and uh, I flew him one way and didn't know another soul there. And he helped me drive my minivan out. And um, yeah, and I just started touring up the West Coast with Barracuda playing cover songs. Nice. Playing every bar I could possibly play. How long did that last? Quite a while. Yeah, <laughs> longer than you wanted yeah, it to. Yeah, long, way longer than I wanted it to. But uh, and then six months later, the big earthquake hit, yeah. and um, you know, but you know, and a few of them kind of moved away because it freaked people out. Yeah. And, uh, and then I kind of just started carving a path out there, you know, figuring it out, mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. But it's, <clears throat> it feels like I lived four lifetimes to get to this yeah. point. You know, yeah. it's it was not a, a quick overnight thing. And, and like, I guess the mental part of that behind moving from Illinois and going to L.A., first of all, there's so many people, so many talented people, yeah. so many beautiful people, yeah. but it's also very expensive to live in L.A. Super expensive. I mean, like, I remember I fell through a roof doing construction <laughs> in the icy cold back home, and that was how I got a, I, I got a settlement check. I didn't even know I was getting mm -hmm. one, but I broke my knee or whatever, and I went through... <laughs> Um, all these surgeries and I couldn't walk for eight months no so kidding. eight months I was in therapy every day I've never heard you talk about that yeah and laying in bed and I actually lived in a trailer uh, because it's a long story but I played rock and roll in wow. this small country town and I would always take my amp out and set it on the roof and jam really <laughs> loud and it, we lived across from this empty park and in my mind 
that park was filled with people. You know, that's what I saw. And in reality, it was like some old guy shitting his dog. Yeah, and Giving you the finger. Yeah, yeah. pretty <laughs> much. Calling the cops. <laughs> the cops showed up and said they, you know, I had two choices. They were going to confiscate my gear. It was a very footloose type town. Wow. Um, or I had to move out to the outskirts out in the country. And the girl I was dating at the time, her mom and dad had a, just an empty trailer sitting on the outskirts. So I moved out there when I was 16. Lived in a little trailer, did construction. What did your mom think of that? She was cool with it, yeah, I think, cool. you know. Um, and then I just, I was obsessed every day out in my trailer. I even tattooed trailer trash on my hands, nice. so I would never forget where I came uh -huh. from. <laughs> but um, it made me work hard, you know. I, I never had, my dad left when I was young, so I never had anybody to save me. Mm -hmm. So I figured out very early in life, the only way I'm going to make it is is on my own. You know, I can't rely on anybody else. I got to work as hard as it's going to take to get what I want in life and where I want to go. And I was willing and determined to make that because I didn't really have anything mm. in that small town there for me. You know, yeah. I always knew I didn't fit in there. I knew I was different Understood. than everybody. But I, I, I just, I don't know, I knew my... I, I don't know how to explain it other than I just knew I didn't fit in, you know. And I would tell my mom that when I was little, you know, I was just like, I do not fit in here. Mm -hmm. I don't belong here, you right. know. And I didn't know where I belonged, <coughs> but uh, now I do. Sure. I, I found Vegas, and yeah. I love Vegas. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's been good to me, too. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I think, um, I think, I guess this isn't universal, but I think if you're a young person, you should probably move away from where you grew up Absolutely. just to experience Absolutely. something else. You can always come back. Absolutely. But to, to, for you, and I'm very much, I was very much the same way. You know, I knew I had to get out and, um, you know, experience something different. But it, it makes a difference when you get that perspective because you yeah. can always go home and, and, and Listen, return. you know, yeah, it's it, people, you know, there's, there's people that, that sit back and complain because their life isn't what they wish it was. And then there's people that, thrive in life because they're willing to take the chance and chance taking a chance in life is really scary yeah um, and a lot of people are scared of failure I've never been afraid of failure because I always looked at failure like I'm doing something right because you got to fail to learn to not make that same mistake again so as long as you're learning you know I think some of the you know the best lessons in my life are the failures I, I went through you know yeah. and it it really kind of helped <coughs> mold who I am today, I think. And um, I always embrace that, you know, because there is no success without failing, you know. Yeah, I agree. And uh, you gotta, you got to be willing to take the chance and to take that jump off the cliff. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, but uh, the ride's worth it, yeah. I think. I, I had a conversation recently with a guy named David Meltzer uh, out of Irvine, California. Um, and, you know, he, he said the same thing. He said, you know, the, the high points are made in the low points of your life. Yeah. That's where all of that is forged. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a very painful place to be and nobody really wants to go there. Exactly. But if you're, you know, if, if you want to do anything outside the norm, you yeah. know, and, you know, for some people, the norm is fine and there's nothing wrong with that. But right. if you want something, you know, larger than you it, have to go to those places. Yeah. And I think what... Really, the what's very normal in life is once you understand everybody's life is a roller coaster. It's not you, nobody's. You may see the guy <laughs> in the Maserati or the Ferrari, be like, man, his life's awesome, but his life still does this. Yeah. You know, I mean, every nobody's life is up here yeah. all the time. Sure. So you got to be willing <coughs> to embrace the curves and the the, the mm -hmm. loops and yeah. on the roller coaster of life. You know, and I think it, as long as you know that when you're going down there will be another up you know as long as you stay positive yeah. in your mind you know you uh, you mentioned self-reliance and there's a book by a guy named professor Sidney Weltmer called self-reliance the key to success in business yeah and it really is true I mean it you know I talk a lot about the importance of team and you know we discussed that a little bit off camera and how critical that can be but yeah. without a leader who has that hardcore self-reliance belief right uh, you know it's probably you know, it's probably wasted a devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's always fascinated me at a young age. I don't know how it clicked, or um, I have very entrepreneurial like people in my family that have done very very well, and I think I've always looked up to them. And then I would study, you know, the 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 
people that weren't at that level, and I was like, what are they doing differently mm. than these people? And what I figured out early on in life, I, without knowing it, I think I figured out the key to success. And I've always kind of, you know, followed that path, and it's it's proven itself right. And they teach you in, you know, from grade school all the way through high school, you have to get a nine to five, you gotta study, you gotta go to college, you gotta get a good job, mm -hmm. get a, you know, they train kids to get a job, get a job. Right. And financial freedom is, is not that. It's not working nine to five, it's not working for somebody else. And Harvard, I've never been there, but I've, I have friends that have been there, they teach you the opposite. They teach you it's better to create create jobs for other to, mm -hmm. you know and you and, and you figure that out along the way it's like you cre you you have a vision and you cr you figure out how to bring that vision to life and uh and it's you know i believe if you're working a nine to five it's going to be a tough road you know yeah. you're always going to be ch i would i you know when i was dating that girl back home I would watch her mom and dad come home every day, and they'd sit in different living rooms. They wouldn't talk. Mm. They worked their nine to five. They're you know just always chasing the rent, and I just was like, they don't look happy. This there has to be more to life than this. And why is the guy in the sports car that owns that company? Why is he so happy? And it, <laughs> it seems like he really never goes to work. Yeah. And how is this? How is this possible? And you kind of start figuring it out. And you're like, huh? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a company and and uh, you know and, and and that's a good thing too because you're you are creating jobs for other people too and you know there are people with the mindset and most people with the mindset in life are just content with going to because sure. they you know because a lot comes with owning a company you take yeah. a lot of risk it's a lot of stress it's a lot of money so certain people are cut cut for that and certain people mm -hmm. aren't they would just rather know okay I get X amount on Friday and my bills get paid mm -hmm. and I'm happy and God bless those people you mm -hmm. know because um, we need those yeah. yeah we do I mean you know and they're important and uh, you know but it's just I kind of I kind of think it's like wherever you want to go in life you just kind of got to get you know set mm -hmm. your mind to that yeah it, it's um, the the way that you lay it out there very succinct too because it's you, you, a lot of people don't talk about the risk yeah. that comes along yeah. with taking that step out. And we'll, we'll talk about some of that stuff, um, but I, I kind of want to go back to the L.A. days because you, you were in Barracuda, you're, you're, <laughs> you're running up and down the, the West Coast, and, yeah. and I'm sure having a great time, Yeah, pr you know, and um, probably dirt poor at that time, right? Yeah, so <laughs> when I fell through the roof, that's where I was going. I, oh, okay. I got a settlement check for 10 grand, and with that 10 grand, I paid off my minivan, I think I had like eight grand left, and I thought I was loaded. Oh, yeah. I thought I was rich. <laughs> I'd never seen that much money in my life. And uh, I think by the time we got to LA, I was pretty much, you know, dead broke or a week you later. You ran through it all. Yeah, it was pretty quick because, <laughs> you know, I was partying like a rock star mm -hmm. way too early. Sure. Um, and then I, I actually had to get a, another construction job. That's all, I, that's all I knew how to do is build, you know, mm -hmm. art and build and music and um, so I worked construction for many years, you know, and, uh, and it kind of, you know, that's where it all started. I was doing this job and I was making demo tapes and I, we were working for some guy who I didn't know it, but I'd play my boss, my demos, and they're really horrible sounding. And, uh, you just four tracking it pretty yeah, much. Four yeah, four track. And he was appeasing me saying I was awesome. And <laughs> obviously I wasn't. But uh, the guy overheard my music, and, and he, I guess he heard something in it, and he signed me to a small little label. It was just, uh, it, it is what it is. And then I quit my job because I thought, okay, I can quit. No. Yeah. And I had to go beg for it back. Um, is that when you did your first solo record? Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. Addiction, addiction to the Friction? Addiction to the sure, Friction, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. So I put that out. And, uh, yeah, so a lot of fun times on that. Nice. <laughs> and then so that transitioned into, um, did you meet Joe Lestay shortly after that? Is that how you guys met or after that record uh, came out? Yeah. So, I mean, years later, yeah, I, I got a call. I became really good <laughs> friends with Lonnie, the bass player for Bullet Boys. Okay. Lonnie and, Vincent, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And me and him became pretty good friends. And he called me one day and said their guitar player couldn't make a tour. And uh, wanted to know if I could uh, fill in, basically. And I said, yeah, I mean, that was a big deal for me. And yeah. 
Um, you know, so I, I did that, and that's where I met Joe. Gotcha. Joe uh, Bang Tango yeah. was playing with us. And, <clears throat> and then after that tour... I may have saw you guys on that tour. I think. Yeah, me and Joe became really good friends, and then Joe came knocking <clears throat> on my door, and I remember looking out going, if he's here to ask me to join Bang Tango, he can forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, hey, dude, you know, let's start a band. And that's kind of, I was like, sure, let's do it. And we started Beautiful Creatures. We started writing a bunch of songs, uh, putting the band together. And that was a long process. Mm -hmm. You know, it took us quite a while to get that off the ground. But we eventually <coughs> uh, ran into a manager named John Greenberg who shopped a deal, got us a deal on Warner Brothers. And Jeff Blue signed us, same guy who signed Linkin Park. Um, and you know, it kind of started started going from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, then Warner Brothers dropped us after we didn't do so well. But I love the album. I yeah. think the album was I a lot too. of fun. Yeah. And they dropped us, and then they offered me my own record deal, and I turned it down because, you know, it's in my nature. Just I was so protective because me and Joe worked so hard sure. on Beautiful Creatures, and I kind of took offense to it that they would drop us, but yet hand me my own deal. Mm -hmm. um, so I turned it down. Well, ironically, and we'll talk about that, but that's a theme in your life, getting a big opportunity and saying, no, I'm going to pass on this one because I see something yeah. bigger on the back yeah. side of that. And I think that requires, I, 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 I swear people probably are going to get sick of hearing me say it, but I, I'm big on self-awareness. Yeah. And I think that requires a huge amount of self-awareness on, on anybody's behalf to take those type of risks. Yeah, I mean, nobody will <laughs> ever know. I've turned down a lot of gigs that, <laughs> that have come um, and not because they weren't great gigs. I just, in my heart, I knew I was very focused. I knew where I wanted to go, mm -hmm. you know? And I was, you know, my name is everything. My brand is everything. So I didn't, I never want, in all, no, no disrespect, I never wanted to be one of those guys that just playing everything, every band you could possibly. Right. I mean, Guns, when the Guns opportunity came along, you know, I had started at, you know, turned down Brides of Destruction. With um, Nikki Six and Tracy Gunn. Yeah, which yeah. Nikki won't ever let me forget about. I bet. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we still joke to this day. But, you know, it was the right thing. I was so focused on doing my project sure. and getting, you know, getting my music out there. It was really important to me. I never got a thrill out of, you know, jumping on a ship that was already floating. I always, I came from that mentality, I need to build my own ship. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? And uh, sometimes that's that's the long way around <coughs> the mountain. And um, But I think if you take that time, you gain a lot more respect from people, you know? Um, <clears throat> the only one I, I really couldn't turn down was, was the Guns gig because I mean, yeah. it was just one of those bands that, it, you know, it inspired me so much growing up and I felt like I really could bring something to the table and I, I have just so much respect for Slash is playing and mm -hmm. stuff, and for me to be able to jump in there, I never thought I'd get the gig, but um, it was cool and it was an honor. And it's one of those times in my life I'll never forget about, and it's uh, you know, I'll always cherish. But yeah. uh, yeah. and I remember you saying uh, Sharon Osbourne put that meeting together because you were yeah. recording the same studio that you, Axel well, was doing Chinese Democracy in. No, she didn't put that, she introduced me to Axel. Oh, I see, yeah, uh, many years prior to I that. Understand. And I didn't know I was on Axel's radar. I had no idea, you know, when, when I got a call, I got a call from Katie McNeil. Uh, and at and the she time. Was, she was your manager in theirs, right? She was my manager for many years, yeah. And uh, um, that, that's a whole nother story, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah, she called me and I had a number one song on the radio with uh, 6 a.m. called Life is Beautiful. Yep. And we'd just gotten off of, I believe it was Crew Fest, I can't, I think, you know. I was drinking a lot, sure. but, uh, um, <laughs> but anyway, our song was number one, and um, I got a call, and she wanted to know if I wanted to, you know, try out for Guns N' Roses, and I was like, you know, of course Who you're going to say yeah. yes. <laughs> Never thought I'd get it, but I was like, yeah, I just want to go hang out with Axel again. We're both from Indiana, and I've always had so much respect for him, so uh, yeah, I went down there, tried out, and uh, and I didn't know it, but I guess Axel called <coughs> management and said if he even shows up, he has a gig. Nice. And I didn't even know I was on his radar, but you know, Axel has his ear close to the ground. He he really knows what mm -hmm. is going on and mm -hmm. who's who and what's you know. He he's incredibly intelligent when it comes to you know just knowing the 
knowing the no, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was it was a big big huge uh, surprise to me actually. So. Yeah, and that's really when I mean it had to be a whirlwind, right? Yeah, I didn't really know what I was stepping into. It, <laughs> it just it was a roller coaster <coughs> from there, and um, but we had the best time. It was just so much fun and debauchery yeah. and just you know three and a half hour concerts and you know went around the world several times yeah. and it was just so much fun playing in that you know but even though i was doing that like i had a you know a sense of accomplishment i think with 6 a.m because it was something six ashba michael it was yep. something i helped create you know beautiful creatures same thing i helped create that thing but i remember thinking you know god okay i'm on a tour bus a really shitty tour bus you know, and I thought, I remember the first time I was on a tour bus with Bullet Boys. And I was like, I felt like I made it. Yeah. And then in my heart, I knew, dude, you're just, this isn't your band. Mm -hmm. You didn't write these songs. And I, so in my heart, I was like, if I can ever get back to this point with a band that I helped write the songs and help, you know, and I did. And I got back there with Beautiful Creatures and had our own bus, songs that I had written, Warner Brothers. But it still wasn't enough, and I was like, "There has to be more." If I can, if I can get back there with, with, you know, less than five guys and do this again, and I did it again with three guys with six a.m. Yeah. and uh, and uh, <coughs> now I'm gonna come back and do it again with one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when when but, you uh, were going through all of that, um, even the six a.m. project. I mean, you're out on Crew Fest, number one song. That that's where you got your Grammy nom, right? Well, okay, so that, that, the Grammy nom wasn't for me. It was for a song that I was involved with. It was a Motley you. Crue song oh, okay. that I had helped on. I helped co-produce, yeah. yeah. I helped co-produce it and co-write it, <coughs> and uh, that's the song that got, gotcha. uh, yeah. So people get that mixed up mm -hmm. all the time, so glad we cleared that yeah. up. But still to be attached to a, a really great oh, yeah. song, a great band, Iconic great band. friends, that, that, you know, it was a really big thing for everybody involved yeah. it was pretty cool and then you get the guns gig i mean can, i want to dive into where you were at mentally with that were you like holy crap i am <laughs> i mean because here here's the thing and everybody and you know people like this we both do but you you attain a certain status level and all of a sudden you have to be like i'm meant to be here and that's cool yeah. sometimes you are yeah but we in your mind we're like i am like I'm losing it here. This is incredible. Weirdly, I mean, weirdly, no. I mean, I was so grateful to have the gig, but it, I've never been one of those people, weirdly, that have ever been starstruck. Mm -hmm. I've just never, I've always looked at everybody as just, you know, everybody's <coughs> kind of on the same level. And it's like, Axel's an incredible, successful, obviously, credible, but even though he doesn't walk in like, like some, cock star he's just a down-to-earth fucking cool dude at the end of the day and easy to talk to and and same thing with nikki same thing with all these guys you know you know in fact for the most part yeah. there's there are some of those <laughs> for sure, sure. <laughs> but you know you know from the ones that i've met it seems like the more uh famous or, or successful they are the cooler they are because it's like they don't really have much to prove it's like hey man i've done it i've made it and they're just content and am. happy yeah. yeah and um so i've always really respected that and i i uh you know and i've met people that aren't near as successful that treated me growing up like complete shit yeah and uh, that I'll never forget about yeah, too. Yeah, so I was too. like, <laughs> growing up, I'm like, if I ever make it, I want to be like that, yeah. and not like that. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I, I think that's how you are. I mean, <clears throat> it's uh, it's pretty awesome to see the transition that you made in that leap. I mean, and then going from, I, I think you joined Guns in what 09? 09, 09 left in 15, yeah. In 2015. Yeah, we put out the uh, 6 a.m. album in 2007. We were writing it in 2006. And uh, we, I joined <coughs> Guns in 2009. And so, fast forward, you leave Guns, and yeah. uh, keep it real, everybody in your life is probably telling, well, because Axel said, we're doing the reunion, Slash yeah. is coming back, but I want you to stay on board. Right. You say, no, I'm, I, I'm gonna go do my own thing. Was everybody in your life like, are you crazy? Do we need yeah, to Yeah, I mean, you? my thing is, you know, it, it was really cool to get that call, but on the other hand, it's like, 
I, again, I knew in my heart where I want to go. <laughs> this is the theme we were and, talking about. And I've never fooled myself. Sure. I've never, you know, when I was in guns, people would be like, oh, you're in Guns N' Roses. I've never been that guy that that's formally of right. and, and I try to cling on to an old band mm -hmm. name that really I shouldn't be taking right. credit for. You know, I, I understand. I just, I've never been like that. If you go to any of my socials, you'll ne you don't even see guitarists of 6 a.m. or right. not. Yeah. Because I, I, I never want to live in the past. I always, I'm so focused on where I'm That's going awesome. that I, I just, I, you know, there's a lot of people that do that and, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a, a legit credit I'll die with, but at the same time, I don't want to <coughs> live off of it. You yeah. know, I want to, I want to keep, keep building, you know, and, yeah. uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting started, yeah. you know, that was a chapter in my life and, sure. and I'm starting a new chapter. And so to me, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I just want to focus focus on where I'm going, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that makes me excited. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And we're going to talk about some of the new music and the stuff that you got yeah. going on. But I, I guess that kind of brings us to where you're at with Ashba Media. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know this. Um, you started in '03, mm -hmm. the company. Yeah, and you know you were still out pretty much in two different bands, uh, yes. very successful bands yeah. by the way, yeah. and running this company even though it was small. But there was a catalyst deal that took place for you guys that we were talking about right. off camera. That I and, and you said something that was remarkable to me. Uh, you got the opportunity and won the deal for all of the Virgin Mega Stores when, yeah. when they were around. Yep. <coughs> and uh, excuse me. And they, um, you beat out what was 106 other agencies. 106 professional agencies. And how it happened is, um, you know, I knew James Michael way back then. Uh, and he's dating uh, D, and D was like the head of marketing department in there. And I remember we were drinking wine in the studio one night, and I was like, I was broke as broke gets. My, yeah, whole nightmare with, you know, I was trying to find a place to live, and and um, you know. This is '03. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a short time for. I mean, such a great. Yeah, I mean, I stuff. remember I, I borrowed, f I mean, I went through a really bad relationship and, you know, and that's a whole nother sure. segment. Yeah. But um, anyway, I was kind of in a, in a point in my life, the roller coaster, yeah. at the bottom of the barrel and, and I had no money, but I needed to find a place to live. I had nowhere to go, basically. And never to this day have I called home for a loan and I've never asked people for money. And James was kind enough to, at that point in my life, loan me four grand. And I put together, and he told me, hey, listen, <coughs> he was like looking for an agency. Yeah. He got, and at that time, I was making money building everybody's websites, you know, like I was putting together websites and I was coding like MySpace, you know, sure. jacking them out with yep. all the ads and stuff. And so I was always into computers and graphic design. So that's where I kind of made chump change, like doing that. And when I'd get overflow work, I'd bring in a few graphic artists <coughs> to help me, you know, with some of the jobs. So at that time, they told me that they were looking, and I called my three friends. I said, listen, if, you know, we got this opportunity, give me your time, and I'll put you on salary if we get the gig, you know. And they did, and we sat in a living room in my one-bedroom apartment. Uh, James loaned me the money. Uh, with a thousand bucks, I incorporated the name Ashba Media. Were you still living in Hollywood at that point? Yeah, okay. yeah. And with the rest, I, I, I think 50 bucks of it, I, I, I started a, or I signed up for an 800 number. And I had an English friend who did this, welcome to Ashba Media, right. you know, and, and made it sound cool. And then I, for another probably 100 bucks, I got business cards and made us look all, you know, we didn't have an address, a business, uh -huh. nothing, you know, I, I, I think. You know, we, we put my apartment number on there without the apartment number. Right, yeah. You know, and just made it look like a legit company. And um, and the 800 number was forwarded to my cell phone. So it was just one of those things where press one if you'd like the creative department and shit like that. Um, and we designed a bunch of designs. And the scariest part was going in to pitch it at Virgin. I knew our designs were awesome. I knew that. But... You know, me walking in with a, a table full of suits, you know, and we had an easel up there when the artwork was covered and I walked in and I was all nervous and I'm like, shit, you know. And as soon as we, you know, unveiled the, the art, everybody in the room gasped. 
Really? And it was just like, okay, you know. What, were you like, is that a good gas? Yeah, yeah. Gas <laughs> no, I was like, and then when I got home, D called me. She's like, I, you know, I've been there many, many years. I've never heard the whole room gas like wow. this. This is great. And basically, they went, and uh, she called me back, and we got the gig. And I think I, you know, I think the gig was we were making twenty thousand a month immediately. So within about a month later, I was able to pay James back, put everybody on salary, and it, it kind of took off from there. But we <coughs> basically bullshitted our way. We were just artists. Yeah. You know? We just yeah. we knew we could design. We just didn't know the business. So we went from that to designing three ad campaigns for every Virgin Megastore worldwide for the next four years or whatever. Unbelievable. So, <laughs> and pretty uh, crazy. A pinch yourself moment, right? I mean, like, yeah, is that this was, happening? that was like <clears throat> one of those moments in life where, you know, you felt the roller coaster go up and you're like, holy shit. Catalyst is, event. Yeah. yeah. And the next one, which wasn't too long after that, I mean, it didn't feel like that long. Um, was the guns gig, you know, because 2003 to 2004-ish, you know. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of put the media focused once Virgin closed down. I shifted all the focus, and we started Ashbrook Clothing in 2007. Mm -hmm. So I took all my designers, and, and we started designing clothes, and, um, and that's been doing incredible. We it's sell a global that. brand now. Yeah, yeah, it's a global brand. We sell to every country in the world. But we started out with one T-shirt in my one bedroom mm -hmm. apartment and uh, we were, my sister would help in the shipping department out of the one car garage. <laughs> Me and her were like a, it was like a sweatshop out there, sewing tags on ourselves and just uh, boxing it up ourselves. And um, to this day, we still sew the tags on and, no and kidding. not me personally, sure, sure. but yeah, but that's how it started off. And to this day, we're the ones that still box it up. I still design every, every shirt mm -hmm. and everything to this day. Anything with this A logo yeah, on it, I, yeah. I design nice. personally. So. That's amazing. It's just, I don't know. I I know what I, yeah. I know where I want my brand to be. Well, that's vision. I mean, yeah. and that's something I think that uh, we probably don't talk about a lot on this show. I don't even know that it's talked about a lot in just everyday circles. But you know, without a vision, yeah, you're dead in the water. All starts you know? with a vision. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And and it takes a lot to to be a visionary because it requires commitment. Yeah. And if you you know if you have a vision, and you don't execute on it, and you know I've, we we've seen it a million times. You see a patent come out and somebody I I had that ten years ago. Yeah. I came up with it. Oh yeah. You had a vision. You just didn't execute. Exactly. That that idea was floating around out there, <clears throat> and you yep. were offered that opportunity. Yep. And then you didn't grab it, and, and so that's it was handed the, to someone else. And at the time, <clears throat> growing up in a very religious family, I was so mad at my mom and dad. We couldn't have a TV. And if we listened to rock radio late at night, my dad would turn off the light and be like, how's it feel to sleep next to Satan? It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, but it was a very strict thing. But because there was nothing to do and we lived out in the farm, basically, mm -hmm. I had to constantly be creative to keep myself from going insane. That's amazing. So now looking back, when I would create games and things to do and draw just to you know, stay sane, other kids would be like playing you know, just, yeah. just, and I think that's where it all came from, really, looking back, just the way I was raised, mm -hmm. I think, you know, just constantly thinking, okay, you know, and I've always had that weird, weird thing in me from, from the beginning. I would always look at something and go, how can I make that better? And it's just always been in my head, you know, mm -hmm. and I get a, I'm a problem solver from mm -hmm. A to B. Let's get to A to yeah. B and, and figure out a creative way how to do that. Yeah. And so, you know, I love, I love, you know, seeing the vision through from, from point A to point B. Yeah. I love thinking about something. There's some, it's like writing a hit song. You, you think, you know, there's something in your head and you figure out the steps. Um, and then when you hold it, a tangible thing in your hand, there's nothing like that. And at that point, it doesn't even matter if it sells or not because that's, you know, I've never done any of this for money. It was right. never money motivated. If it was, <laughs> I'd have been taking every game. Oh, yeah, for sure. So to me, it was, <laughs> it was about there's some thrill in, in really visually seeing, you know, this water bottle in my head and turning around, designing it, and to physically touch it and drink it. I mean, there's something just awesome mm -hmm. about that. And yeah. so that, to me, is... 
is what I'm all about. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, when Virgin mm -hmm. shut down and that account was kind of gone, the money yeah. dried up from that. You you got the guns gig. Was there a, was there a kind of a, a time of I guess terror for you? Like, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Because going from your company, even though it's your company, you're still allowed to pay yourself a salary. It's making twenty grand a month. Yeah. And you get a couple more deals. Yeah, it, it was it was scary when we lost that because there was a, a short period where you know um, we were starting just starting 6 a.m. you know and at that time yeah there was a point where you know I was saving up all this money mm -hmm. and then it was starting to go 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 sure. you know and and uh, I've had a few of those moments when I got my first publishing check from Beautiful Creatures I remember me and Joe called each other because we had written the songs and I think we both had a check at Warner Brothers for 250 grand nice and there, you had songs and movies and stuff like yeah, that Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. But I had to call, at that time I was so broke, I had to call a friend to loan me $3 to put gas in my car to go pick up my check. No kidding. Yeah. To pick up a quarter of a million yeah, dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of those moments where I, I have a good guardian angel, yeah. I think. And I think it, yeah, I mean, because, you know, to be out in L.A., as you know alone with really nobody to go back yeah. home to nobody's yeah. gonna catch me if I fall you know I'm convinced I had a I still have a great guardian yeah. angel <laughs> yeah absolutely but that self-reliance got you to where you are yeah so you transition back to the guns thing so you get in there and they tell you and I don't want to know the number there's probably some people do but I mean was that a killer check for you uh, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Ridic yeah. ridiculous I mean I, I yeah yeah, nice, nice. And, so, and, and I was smart, you know, I, I, I saved and I yeah. saved and I tucked it away and I saved because in my mind, nothing lasts forever. Yeah. That roller coaster is eventually going to come down and, and get you prepared for the next loop and mm -hmm. the turn. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I was, you know, I didn't make the same mistakes before. Whereas the quarter million dollars before I blew through yeah. because I thought, you know, I was rich. Mm -hmm. and, it comes and goes so you know I learned through that whole process and I've always had bad credit so I never growing up sure you know um, and I remember trying to get credit cards back home I'd always get denied and, and then again I was like if I'm gonna make it in this world I'm gonna have to do it off of debit cards not mm -hmm. credit cards mm -hmm. and to this day I still haven't <coughs> ever used a credit card in my no life kidding. You know? um, but it forced me to go if I don't have the money for it then I'm not buying it yeah. And, it, and I had to turn away yeah. from a lot of things I would have loved to put on credit cards. But I'm, that's another thing I'm thankful for is it really kind of helped me manage yeah. money, yeah. you know, and figure out that side of things growing up. You know, I, I find that extremely admirable because I've seen your house, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Lamborghini that you had. Now you Nothing got a McLaren, credit. You know, no. now you got a McLaren. I mean, yeah. that for me, that, sure. that says something about you as a person where you're like, I'm willing to dig deep and invest in myself. Right and not rely you know that self-reliance thing yeah. so um when you're when you're I, I wanted i wanted a mclaren you know five years yeah ago. yeah me too <laughs> but you know s you know but i'm smart <laughs> i was smart enough to go i love sports cars but i can buy this lamborghini you know i could have easily went out and just blew money and and bought a mclaren five years ago mm -hmm. no problem but i wanted to make sure that financially you know you never want to spend more than you're making obviously but you, you just want to budget so I've never you know and now you just kind of grow it grow it grow it and mm -hmm. it grows and then when you can buy a McLaren without losing a wink of sleep then you go buy your McLaren yeah. but um, you know I just that's that's always been my you know I think the worst stress in the world is money stress yeah yeah and so you know that's one thing I was like I just I never want to have that stress ever that's yeah. extremely countercultural too yeah. in the, the era that we live in, in an, in an era of instant gratification. Yeah. Everybody wants it now. And yeah. so I think that's rare that you, you took that path because most people would have said, yeah. I've got the money now. It's yeah. clearing time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. But in <clears throat> my, my head, I'm like, I still need money to run this company and this company and this company. And to me, the people that take care of me are is my kick-ass team around me my employees is this isn't I'm just a visionary mm -hmm. I mean these guys are working their asses off and creating well all together but 
creating just mind-blowing 3D environments and all the cool stuff we do because mm -hmm. we we went from a di you know a graphic company into mm -hmm. again I had a vision when I moved here uh, Cirque knocked on my door mm -hmm. Cirque du Soleil yeah. Lou um, head of marketing there and he's like I love what you did uh, for Virgin we'd like to see if we can get you in at Cirque and and I just had that at that time I had this crazy idea as I've always been into props and and it's always intrigued me that you know the this you know molding and sculpting and uh, you know ever since I was in school I would be in those classes mm -hmm. and advanced art doing all that and it, and I was trying to figure out you know how can I take the vision in my head and make it tangible you know and I kind of took the same path with the media you know we were once just digital how do I take that off the paper and to where we can physically mm -hmm. take a picture next to it and touch it and and, uh, and it kind of took off from there and yeah. that and kind of crossing those two things Ashba media just skyrocketed yeah. you know so it was it was the right move you know being a rock star does not lend itself to <clears throat> At least in my opinion, mm -hmm. the business world. You know, yeah. that's why there's a music business. You right. know, and, and the creatives do their thing. Was your training on the job, learning to be a CEO, managing, hiring, budgets, you know, profit and loss, all of these things that kind of come along with everything that you have to deal with on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. Did you have a team to help you with that, or did you just jump in I the deep end? I figured it out by many, many, many mistakes. A lot of failure. <laughs> and I learned a lot along the way. It, I, I've never been to, to business school sure. ever. Um, never wanted to be a CEO. Mm -hmm. I just hated having a job so bad <laughs> and somebody telling me what to do <laughs> that I go, I want to be my own boss because right. I hate coming to work and I hate being, you know, fired. And I, you know, so I figured it out, but it was, I'm still figuring it out. You know, there's still stuff we learn every single day here going, oh, we have to have that insurance, what, you know, and you, you learn, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's a never ending, uh, never ending learning curve, I think. Um, but it's, it's been fun, man. Yeah. It's, it's been awesome to see this company just, just blow up. And now every, you know, every client we have is a billion dollar client. I mean, they're just massive yeah. companies we're working for and they're putting their trust in our company <coughs> because, you know, to me, there's there's something about when your name's on that door, nothing leaves this place unless it is flawless. You know this place. So we are, even though we're growing, we're still that that small little company mentality to where we're a family here, and and you know our our work to us means more than any paycheck could ever. So it's it's stamping that A logo on something means everything to mm -hmm. me. Whether I'm designing a water bottle, a guitar. Or, or the next big display for Redken, you mm -hmm. know, it's like one of those things where we really put our heart and soul and, and, and everything on the table for this thing. I think that's awesome. Um, that that level of quality it shows too, and the yeah. stuff that I've seen here today. Yeah, and it's a fantastic facility. And I owe it all to my team. They're they're just <coughs> I I I've brought on some of the most. They're all handpicked. Some of the most talented people, in my opinion, that. Um, and I wanted to create an environment at, at Ashma Media where it felt like art class back in school. Nice. Like I loved going to art yeah. class. And um, it was just one of those times where you kind of forget about your problems and you just create and you get in that tunnel vision and you create some, at the end of the class, <clears throat> whatever it is you've created, it's like, you know, you're proud of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, that was cool. It didn't feel like work. So I treat everybody here um, everybody is their own boss. Mm -hmm. I don't ever walk in like I own the place. I, I, I treat everybody. They're all my friends. Um, as long as we do, you know, and I never have to, to, to worry about it, but as long as we make the deadlines come under budget and our work is flawless, that's all I care about. And that's, that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's the given, you know, but they come in here and it is literally like we'll come in and just do brainstorming meetings and order a pizza and just, you know, it's it's an art class yeah. and it, it doesn't feel like a job to anybody and, and it's awesome, you know. Yeah. So. Do you run the business like you run your personal life where, I mean, because sometimes businesses need financing. Do you run it very much the same way? Yeah, I, I run everything the same way for sure. You know, every, th every company I have is completely separated from one another even though they're, 
they all fall under Ash Enterprises. Mm -hmm. So clothing, water, you know, I look at my life like music, clothing, water, mm -hmm. and media, and and they're all very much differently ran, but they're ran the same. Yeah. You know, as far as they all have their own, you know, <coughs> employees, different time clocks, different payrolls. You know, everything's separated. You know, different business license and bank accounts. Everything is, mm -hmm. is separated. So yeah. And uh, like I have people here that if we need somebody down at my clothing store, say somebody is sick, you know, we might have an employee here go there and uh, that's a separate paycheck for them. Yeah. You know, so it's just completely nice ran like four individual yeah. companies. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that a little bit, the clothing, because um, you have a great relationship with the team at the Strat yeah. here in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, used to be called the stratosphere for people who don't know it's been rebranded but it's a they it's been you know refurbished and looks right. great yeah um you have your clothing store there and that's doing great you had the grand opening you're always there <laughs> you're, I, I, I try you, to be yeah you're there a lot um uh there's a comedy store right down the way yeah, your LA water comedy. is in there yeah. you know i mean how how did you develop that relationship with with those guys and get everything because i mean your influence is I mean, you can see it in, in, in that building. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where we used to have the clothing actually in this very room we're sitting in. It was sitting all in the corner and, you know, I had somebody here shipping it out every day and stuff and we we're doing great numbers online. I'd never had a store before, so, you know, it was, it was just, you know, everything kind of just happens, you know, and I wanted to put it in a place where, you know, the Strats, always I don't know I've always loved the place you know ever since I started coming to Vegas it was it's iconic yeah. it was just a cool iconic place to go and uh, they they really uh, you know offered me a deal I couldn't refuse nice. and it was just awesome because it was like the best of both worlds so bringing in my clothing there was a, a huge thing but I'd never laid it out in a, a physical store before you know it started off with one t-shirt and I grew it into uh, over 400 items and we had 62 vendors making everything, and it was just a lot of work. And that was just me and my sister working it. Mm -hmm. So at that time, oops, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> she lives here in Vegas now? She used to. Oh, okay. She moved to L.A. Gotcha. But, but, you know, and then we went, we are like, and then I sat back and I was like, man, we're, I don't want to ever lose the quality because we have bells and whistles and everything. I mm -hmm. go, let's, let's pull it all back and what are the five top things that sell that people really want? That's t-shirts, beanies, hoodies, jewelry, you know, accessories, whatever. And we literally got rid of pretty much everything else and just focused and, and put more focus on a few items and made those few items great, mm -hmm. you know. So that's kind of, you know, we laid out laid it out in the first store and I realized we could only fit half of our stuff in the store and, mm -hmm. and less than a year later we moved around the corner to the bigger shop, so. What um, you, we we were talking off camera, and you mentioned it, it, me and you suffer from the same thing. It's hard to turn our brains off at night. Yeah. What do you What do you like to do when you're just not working, or are you ever not um, working? I'm always working. Uh, my brain won't shut down. Mm -hmm. It's just constant, constant go. It's it's my best friend and worst enemy. You know, it's like last night. I think I got maybe two hours of sleep. It's just, you know. That's the one thing having a creative, creative mind. It's just not something you can just shut off yeah. like that, you know. And it's it's brutal. I have mm -hmm. the worst insomnia, and, and you know, but I love it at the same time because you know, your brain's, you know, thinking about five hundred things yeah. at once, and it's like firing in all different directions, and so that's pretty cool. I think in those quiet times are when the best ideas come. Yeah. I mean, it, it, because it seems torturous when you're yeah. laying there and you can't sleep. Yeah. But um, on many nights, that's when my best yeah. ideas come to me. I like so. uh, just to watch like ID go and ridiculousness a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of clear my head a clear little it out. bit. Yeah. So. What um What do you think about the current state of the music biz with streaming and all of that? I love it. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I love it. I think it's the best thing <coughs> that ever happened. You know, it's it's great. You can. You know, it's sad to see like the Tower Records and stuff yeah, go down. That, that bums you out because I'm from that school, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, I embrace technology, I always have, and I, I just think it's great. You can, you can pay a, a very small fee every month to Apple or Spotify or, your, you know, whatever you choose, Pandora, and you can get any song in the world, yeah. you know. You no longer have to, you know, I remember 
you know, my CDs melding on my right. my dashboard and stuff. So it's like those days are gone. They were cumbersome to carry around. Yeah, yeah for I sure. Mean, I, you know, you probably go into your friend's house or probably had it yourself where you have the wall of CDs yeah. and, and, you know, before that, the albums and stuff. But nothing sounds as good as a vinyl record. Yeah, I, I don't I think there's just, there's a sound to it. That's, and there's been a resurgence in, yeah, in vinyl in recent yeah. years, which is very cool. Yeah, I love vinyl. I love the way they sound. Yeah. But it is great, and it's it's great for kids on the go, and just you know something where you can throw out a, you know, you can throw out a song, and the world can hear it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. You have uh, uh, just a, a vast um, array of experiences. What would you give? Uh, what advice would you give to a young artist coming up who wants to try that, put their put their eggs in that basket, and and go that route? I honestly, the best advice I could give you is, is, you know, diversify, you know, put your eggs definitely in that basket and give it, you know, when you're in that basket, you give it a hundred percent you, you stay focused on that. Um, but definitely diversify because if I hadn't gone into media and different things, you know, that I don't even really talk about too much. I mean, it really, when that roller coaster comes down, which it eventually will, hopefully the other roller coaster in your life is on and up, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it kind of does this through, through your life. So, you know, one helps the other, mm -hmm. you know, and when you go out and you put out albums and stuff, all of a sudden your clothing starts shooting up and everything starts shooting yeah. up. But you always your have water. that one thing out there, the media that's pretty damn consistent, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it just, you know, so, and that's just my life, but find your own baskets and just, you know, you know, just focus on those, mm -hmm. and um, but you, there's nothing in life you can't have if you want it bad enough. You just got to be willing to work as hard as it takes to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's I don't think there's no such thing as I mean, there's luck and there's lucky people that are born into it. Mm -hmm. But um, the most of us uh, weren't born that way. Yeah. You know, I came from basically a trailer. You know, yeah. so um, if I can do it, you know, never going to college, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm pretty pretty convinced of that you just you know but it does take an extreme amount of dedication and focus and and you know you it's it's you know financial freedom or being your own boss is not a nine to five that's what I'm saying if you want to work nine to five that's cool but you most likely you're going to be chasing your tail and and struggling with bills and looking at price tags but if you're willing to literally work from the morning Till, till you can't stay awake any longer, you know, you, you can get a lot more done in life, yeah. you know, and, and uh, you know, that's where you're gonna find your financial freedom. But that you can't do it for the money, you gotta do it. It has to be like this place, you come here and it doesn't feel like work, you know, it should never feel like work. If it does, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, so. yeah. it's gotta be born out of passion. Yeah, for sure. Well, what made you get into water? Water was one of those things. I was actually designing a vodka bottle. No kidding. And, and it actually had a doing it had yeah. actually had a stem. <laughs> um, um, but uh, it was one of those things where I had I had been on tour all around the world, mm -hmm. and I I am married to a beautiful Colombian, uh, Natty, who's uh, who's you know just awesome. But I spent a lot of time in South America, and and yes, we have homeless problems and we have our problems and I'm, I'm not overlooking that at all but water was something where I really wanted to do something again not for the money something I could really give back and help and um, you know this is not a get rich thing at all sure. it's pure passion and uh, but it was one of those things where if you read on the on the side of this it's it it goes to um, every bottle sold goes to helping build homes for people in Latin America, the oh, Caribbeans and stuff. Amazing. And, um, and the whole story is kind of on the bottle, but it's a, it's a charity called Techo and they do amazing things over there. So basically I just wanted to create a product that everybody, no matter how old you are, you could, you could buy because every, every time you drink this water, you, you know, it, it actually does mm -hmm. go to a really good, good cause. It's pretty cool. That is cool. I'd like to help you with that. Maybe we can figure out yeah. a way to expose that to Definitely. more and more people. Cause I think that's an amazing cause and yeah. you're right. I mean, the earth is largely water, but it's salt. It, we it, can't it, use it until it's exactly. purified. Exactly. So. Down there, they just, they don't have clean drinking <coughs> water. They, they don't, you know, there's a lot of people without homes and 
it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's sad, you know, and, and they're just some of the nicest mm -hmm. people I've ever met in my life and, and good hearts. They have, you know, their love for music is mm -hmm. incredible. You know, all the Guns concerts we played down there, the, the fans in Brazil and, and you know, just everywhere. It, it's just, it's, their passion is like no other. And, and it really touched me in a mm -hmm. way to where I was like, Whatever I can do, I, I, I know this isn't doing a whole lot, but whatever I can do, I want to create mm -hmm. a product that at least I can kind of give back somehow, somehow you know, and, yeah. you know, so. You mentioned that, and you guys have been married for a while. How do you, how do you balance having a <laughs> successful marriage and yeah. all the crazy stuff that you do? I mean, right now you got a break in the album tour type cycle sure. until your new project yeah. comes out, and that's what we're going to wrap up with, but how, uh, it's, it's how do you great. do that? It's great. We're both incredible. Number one, I, I definitely married the right girl. There's zero jealousy. We, you know, very rarely have a disagreement. And if we do, we figure it out pretty quick. But we have each other's back. You know, I want the best for her. She wants the best for me. And we're so supportive of each other right now. I mean, I, she's made me, you know, incredibly proud. She's out there killing it on social media. And, um, She's in Milan right now at fashion show, mm -hmm. and she just loves that world, mm -hmm. and she's doing great things. But also, she's she's one of the best, you know, friends you could ever have, and just incredibly supportive of everything I want to do. She's down, and it, it's just really cool. You know, we just have, it's a really pure relationship. Mm -hmm. It's cool, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's just again, it's not work. Yeah. You know, if you, yeah. every relationship is work, but it, it shouldn't feel like you're going to a job. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's rad. She's, she's awesome. That's so bad. it's easy, you know. What, uh, so what are you doing now? You got the new project. You want to tell people about it? Yeah. Um, I got a bunch of things I can't really talk about yet, but it's going to be out within probably two weeks, uh, as far as all the press release stuff. But what I can tell you is when I left Guns, um, uh, I wanted to create, for me, I wanted to push myself as hard as I could musically. And, you know, I've, I've done the rock thing my whole career. Yeah. But throughout my career, coming from a religious family, I listened to a lot of other stuff outside mm -hmm. of rock. I wasn't really allowed to listen to rock. The right. only rock I could listen to was Elvis because my mom loved Elvis, thank God. Um, but I listened to classical, you know, I listened to jazz, to all these different genres and I wanted to create a project, uh, try to create a new sound, combining all of the elements that made me who I am as far as the way I play today and you know it's all those influences you hear growing up as a kid so my goal was to um, basically put all these different genres in a blender as a producer and see what comes out. You know, and it was a three-year project. Wow. I sat in the studio for three years, which was one of the most frustrating, gratifying, and hardest things I've ever had to do in my career is to walk away from the thing I love most, and that's my fans, and entertaining, um, to try to create something that I could be really, really proud of, something so unique. And <clears throat> the one thing that's always frustrated, uh, frustrated me with the rock scene is we're the the only genre that really doesn't do a whole lot of collaborations, mm -hmm. very little collaborations. Mm -hmm. And to me, I love playing. I mean, I, I've worked with Neil Diamond to all, you know, different genres. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to create a project where I could not only put together songs and produce and write songs that had a little bit of all these different genres in it that I love, you know. Mm -hmm. So I took pop, EDM, rock, you know, and put every everything in a blender and um, but there's more to it I wanted to also feature different singers from different genres and do a radio version uh, because I know how important radio mm -hmm. is but every radio song album song I, I uh, that I've written so far I've produced and remixed into a live version oh, so okay. my whole idea is I'm gonna put out the the video the song for radio yeah. But then live, when you come see it live, I'm going to tour with just a DJ with the singers on the big screens mm -hmm. and play the remix version live. Wow. So it sounds really whole, immersive, though. It's, it's killer. Like, it's just a whole, it's, it's exciting. <coughs> it, got me, it got me super inspired again. You know, I dove in the studio, 
and uh, the sound is just, it's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. It sounds really like nothing else you've heard. It's just, it's got this cool, it's like, if you I wanted to create a, you know, songs that if you like rock, there's enough big rock right. guitar in it. If you like EDM, you're gonna love the, the, you know, there's enough EDM beats and enough cool stuff in it and enough pop sense melodies and stuff and you know there's latin influence with congas and mm -hmm. horns and violins and cellos no, and it just it's it's really different it's really cool and it's you know from scoring movies so it has a lot of like you know orchestral stuff in it because that's a big part of who i am too yeah. and um so i just wanted <coughs> to create something different and i think if if i were to just you know basically you know come out with something that sounds like my other band 6am yeah. it's like what's the point yeah. you know so just go do it with him yeah, yeah you know so if i'm going to do something just rock i'm going to go do it with 6am but i wanted to create something where i was pushed musically yeah. you know yeah. try to do something different yeah. you know can cool. i hear some of the demos today yeah yeah nice nice Play i can't wait i'm super pumped <laughs> super pumped That's yeah it's awesome. pretty cool stuff nice last thing where can people find you uh, just go to at DJ Ashba online, uh, Instagram. Yeah, so it's easy. Or djashba.com or I'm out there. Just Google my name. Ashba Media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, it's so weird with Google. Like I'll be sitting there talking about a friend about an old thing. Like, oh, yeah, I remember when I, I met him or this. I just, you know, type. Google's like my, uh, yeah, my photo to. album right. now. So I just, uh, you know. There's pictures on there of me that I've never even seen. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ash, I can't thank you enough for having us in, and it's been absolutely amazing. I, I love your story, and that's, you know, thank when you. I bumped into you again at the airport, yeah. I said, hey, man, you know, we got to do this. Uh, so I know you've been busy, and thanks for taking the time yeah, to sit man. down with us. I think it's amazing. And your story awesome. and the music and the, you know, the company, I, I, I can't wait to see what's next for you. Thank You're you, a winner, brother. man, and I love it. <laughs> thank I love you. It. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Peace out, guys. Peace, guys, and thank you for watching. Uh, you heard it from DJ Ashba himself. He is uh, the master of reinvention. You can do it, too. So until next time, be good to each other and be good to yourselves. We'll see you soon.